Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. Due to YouTube's changing quote-unquote community standards, I created a channel called Grumpy Old Fart over on Rumble, a free speech alternative to YouTube. You can see all of my stuff over there, including my political and social commentary, as well as my current events videos. The links to my YouTube and Rumble channels, as, as well as links to let you order my books, are in the description of this video. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I welcome your comments, even if you disagree with me. Now, on with the video. Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. I'm doing a UFO Archives video on the Condon Report. Uh, the history of government investigations in America is one of jokes, shams, cover-ups, and outright blunders. These days, anyone who believes anything, any official government explanation, is setting themselves up for failure. The United States government lies so much to all of us about everything. If a weatherman says it's raining, I step outside to see for myself. Honestly. With all the revelations of Twitter and the revelations of what we now know Hillary Clinton was actually doing. They, I did a, I did this, I put this in a video a while back. Uh, they, they did the, uh, an X-Files, it's not a reunion, it's where they picked up and did, I think, two seasons. But those two seasons, I, I loved seeing Mulder and Scully back together, the actors and, and, and all. But the storyline suffered so bad because, well, one, they were all woke. And two, they had nothing to do. Let me explain. The X-Files was about government conspiracies and cover-ups and this and that. The problem is, at that time, we knew what Hillary Clinton had already done. We knew about Benghazi. We knew about the Clinton Foundation. We knew about Hillary Clinton selling uranium, our uranium, to the Russians and pocketing money. We knew all about that. And yes, all of that did happen. And, and much, much more. My contention there is it's hard to create. Chris Carter was the guy who did the X-Files. And as inventive as he is, it's hard to create a government conspiracy about anything that was worse than what we already knew Hillary Clinton was actually doing or actually had done. So, And, and the other Democrats too. It's not just Hillary Clinton. But my, my contention there is <clears throat> we knew the government was lying to us. We knew there were government conspiracies. So it ruined the X-Files. Because they had no stories left. All they could do was Monsters of the Week. And, and if all they're doing is Monsters of the Week, it... it it didn't, it was okay, but it wasn't the same, you know? That's where we are now with government lies. Because we're finding out now the, the Hunter Biden laptop story is real, and they all said it was lies. We're finding out what Joe Biden was doing in Ukraine. We're finding out their ties to China. Government lies to us all, all the time. I just did a, a current events and I talked about James Clapper. James Clapper lied to Congress. He said, under oath, he said that the, they don't collect metadata on Americans. and They don't. They collect it on everybody. Holy shit. They had to make a new facility for it. It's like acres big just to hold all the data they collect on people. Every time you push a key on your keyboard, they, they record it. My contention is the government lies about everything. So... The Condon Report is a classic example of what I'm talking about. Citizens of the state of Michigan were up in arms because Dr. J. Allen Hynek had been sent by Project Blue Book to investigate UFO sightings in marshland. And it's, <clears throat> after several days slogging through the marshes, Hynek held a Hynek, J. Allen Hynek. He held a news conference. The locals were in an uproar because of the sightings, and he spoke of the possibility, the possibility that the sightings were caused by marsh gas, swamp lights, will-o'-the-wisp, or foxfire. He made no actual claims, but only suggested possible explanations. 
Blue Book officers made it sound like an official position. The national media exploded with claims that the Air Force was insulting the public with theories of swamp gas. And rightly so. Representative Gerald R. Ford, later to become president, pressured the Armed Services Committee to hold the, Rever the Rivers hearing on April 5, 1966. This hearing had the potential to include thousands of witnesses of actual UFOs, but instead limited their scope to three witnesses, none of which had ever seen a UFO. Two of these witnesses, United States Air Force Secretary Harold D. Brown and Dr. Heineck himself, both suggested that a scientific panel with a civilian panel of physical and social scientists should be commissioned to study the phenomenon. Heineck was a dedicated skeptic. But over the course of his time with Blue Book, he had become more open to the possibility that UFOs were real. The University of Colorado accepted the study, underfunded as it was, and noted, phys and noted physicist Edward U. Condon was named director of the study. Condon had long-standing ties to the government and was very acclimated to keeping government secrets. He'd previously worked on the development of radar and the atomic bomb, so he knew how to keep a government secret. Less than three months into the study, Condon set the tone for the investigation when he was quoted in the media as stating, quote, listen to this quote, It is my inclination right now to recommend that the government get out of this business. My attitude right now is that there is nothing to it. He then smiled and added, quote, but I'm not supposed to reach a conclusion for another year. That was a sledgehammer blow to the gut of the of actual people doing real UFO research. <clears throat> when the government, when the guy in charge of the study that the government's funding to study UFOs makes a statement like this, and he's saying that well, there's nothing to it, and I'm going to recommend that, but i got to wait a year to make this recommendation. Yeah, something's wrong. Something's really wrong. Condon's attitude clashed with the field investigators. The study group soon broke into factions. These factions bickered and argued constantly. Outside sources such as UFO organizations, believers, disbelievers, intelligence agents, and newsmen meddled in the study. All of this brought any meaningful investigation to a standstill. Most of the committee's staff considered resigning. One who did, Mary Louise Armstrong, accused the study's leadership of foot-dragging, dis dissembling, and operating from one judge, excuse me, operating from prejudged opinions. She accused the leadership of hiding cases that showed possible extraterrestrial intelligence and not taking the study seriously. That's broadly paraphrased. <clears throat> the study's credibility suffered another blow when a 1966 memo surfaced from Bob Lowe, who was the project coordinator, to the dean of Colorado University's grad of the of to the dean of Colorado University's graduate school. In that memo, Lowe expressed his view that the study needed to look objective and legitimate to the public, while appearing to the scientific community as not taking the UFO phenomena seriously. Two study staffers who openly criticized Condon and Lowe's directed verdict were fired for insubordination. Dr. Heineck, some years later, wrote that the study limited the scope of the cases that they studied to those that could be explained as natural phenomena, misunderstood as UFOs. The Air Force took steps to forestall dissatisfaction with the committee's reports, including dropping Dr. Heineck as a consultant, attacking scientists who questioned the report, and arranging for a secret panel of the National Academy of Science to review the report prior to release. This panel, of course, validated the Condon report. It's been said about the National uh, Academy of Science, the National Academy of Science, it's been said about the National Academy of Science that if you show me a result, I'll put together a panel that will give you that result. 
So they're they're a joke. <sighs> the the Condon report was officially released on January 9th, 1969. It was titled, quote, Scientific Study of Unidentified Flying Objects. The report stated, quote, Our general conclusion is that nothing has come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years that has added to the scientific knowledge. It also recommended that further study would yield no new scientific advancement. In other words, there's nothing to see here. Everyone in the know knew that it was crap. Dr. Heineck later stated that several scientists had told him that it was a study of the Condon Report that first led them to realize that the UFO problem was one worthy of investigation. The report said there was nothing there, but these other scientists, knowing how crappy the, the report was, said that the report was what led them to believe that the UFO problem needed to be studied. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I'm reminded of the Warren Commission's report on the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. It has been said that the only way to believe that report is not to read it. That sounds a lot like the Condon report. Science, real science, real science, follows facts. It does not pick and choose or cherry pick which facts it wants to follow. Scientists cannot be afraid to follow whatever path the facts dictate. Facts. Facts should dictate the course. Scientists cannot face, excuse me, scientists cannot force preconceived conclusions on an investigation. If you've made up your mind before the investigation, the investigation is pointless. Scientists cannot force the facts to fit a conclusion that they prefer. The facts lead where they lead. You can't choose to make them lead elsewhere. I think that's something along the lines with the, that, uh, National Academy of Science was doing. What is it? The the yeah, the National Academy of Science. I think that's what they were doing. Um, the Condon report was just another government whitewash of the truth, and in this case, it was so badly done that real scientists saw right through it, and many, many determined for themselves that maybe the UFO question deserved real consideration. <laughs> Talk about unintended consequences. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all. We elect cookie cutter politicians every single election cycle. Yes, men who maintain the status quo and do just enough to make us believe the system still works. Imagine, if you will, a president who actually tries to fix things. If you like action, political intrigue, and a righteous crusade, check out my political thriller, The Righteous President.